and welcome into this very special edition of ACAP Today for the week of April 4th, 2022. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program, and the reason this edition is very special is we're going to welcome on this broadcast two former and our current ACAP board chair. We're going to have another retrospective like we did with the past CEOs just about a couple of months ago. Uh, this time we're going to talk about things from the governance level and how things have changed uh, throughout uh, ACAP over the last 50 years from the perspective of three leaders who are volunteers who helped guide our board and this organization through its first five decades of service to the people of Aroostook County. We're going to get to that very important discussion and that very meaningful discussion in just a little bit. Uh, and our guest will be, by the way, Dana Connors, uh, the president of the Maine Chamber of Commerce and a former Presque City Manager and Department of Transportation a Commissioner for the state of Maine. Dana it will be returning uh, to this this broadcast um, returning to Prescott virtually uh, to participate in the discussion, as will be Steve Richard, ACAP's longest serving board chair, and of course Trudy Gorno, our current board chair, who are all going to talk about why ACAP means so much to them, why it means so much to this community, and all that we've been able to accomplish over the past 50 years. We'll have that conversation in just a minute, but first we begin as we always do on ACAP today with the news and information that you can use, and we begin with this. Uh, we shared with you last week in our extended interview that the homeowner assistance program is expected to be online as early as May 1st. That's the target launch date at this point. Now, as we did in last week's broadcast, we want to temper expectations around this program. For those of you who have been hearing us speak about the emergency rental assistance program, the homeowner assistance fund is very different than the the rental assistance program. Uh, first of all, it requires folks to have exhausted most other means in terms of being able to uh, remedy uh, the current situation with payments on their mortgage, their housing property tax, or utility payments. So it's not um, as broad a program to be able to get into. It will provide up to $25,000 per eligible household. Now we're told that the application will be available directly online. Folks will submit directly online. Our agency will be providing some administrative support and will be providing assistance for homeowner counseling for those who get through the program and make it to that level of the program. Uh, but we anticipate that the, uh, in the engagement of our agency on this program will be a lot less and there'll be a lot more direct work done through the online portal. So that said, we are looking forward to releasing more information about our specific engagement with this program in the weeks to come as we head toward May 2nd, but hopefully more to come on that in the near future for you. Again, this program is being funded through the U.S. Department of Treasury and administered in Maine through the Maine Bureau of Consumer Credit Protection, who we are taking our direction from uh, as it relates to this Homeowner Assistance Fund program. So more to come on that. We also are encouraging folks to save the date. Uh, ACAP is the fiscal agent for the Pride Aroostook Group, and the Pride Aroostook event is being held this year on June 18th, 2022, at Riverside Park in Presque Isle. It will be a number of activities, including an art auction, a music and a parade, a scavenger hunt, make your own art, a community picnic. There'll also be some storytelling and some improv theater, and little chair painting, as well as live art. A full array of activity is being planned again for June 18th, which is Pride Month. Uh, Pride Aroostook is pleased to host this event again at Riverside Park on June 18th. We move on now to talk about the Home Energy Assistance Program. We talk to you about this each and every week, and there's a reason for that. It is very important, but it is probably more important now than ever with the increased cost of fuel oil and the increased cost of electricity. Uh, our team members have been working and have begun to go out into the community to talk more about this program. They've been working with individuals who have been having their taxes prepared through the tax preparation program uh, that United Way of Aroostook, the Cash Coalition under uh, the partnership with um, New Ventures, Maine, ACAP, and other partners in the community and the sponsorship of County Federal Credit Union. We've been working on this partnership and encouraging people to apply for HEAP at the end of their tax appointment. And it does appear that folks are available, that folks are qualifying for the program. So we encourage you to look at these income levels. 
Um, there's a little bit of work to this program. Uh, currently, we're taking appointments within the same week, so it's a great time to apply. And if you're worried, my goodness, I'm, 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 I just filled up and I probably won't need oil again until the fall. Uh, don't worry about that because any benefit that you would get would stay on your account for up to 18 months. It goes directly to your fuel vendor, so it would be there when it's time to turn the thermostat up again in the fall. So please do consider, consider scheduling a HEAP appointment. We're also going to be at the top of Main Trade Show where we'll be doing on-the-spot HEAP appointments in Madawaska in the last uh, full weekend of April. And we hope that you will uh, join us for that uh, coming up again at the end of April at the top of Main Trade Show in Madawaska and be looking for us at other community events as the spring and summer go on. If you are having trouble paying utility bills, especially seniors who rent right now. Uh, the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, though it's established as a rental assistance program, does provide assistance with utilities. We encourage you to apply. It does take between four and eight weeks to process an application. So please get your application in as soon as possible. You can go directly to mainrentrelief.com to fill out an application online. If you're unable to do so or prefer to do it over the phone, you can give us a call at 764-3721 and we will be able to help you process that information over the phone. Again, this is an option for those who rent and who are challenged, especially with paying utilities. And we understand that that's the case for so many people uh, right now at this time. We also want to share with you uh, that there is a new quarantine and isolation calculator that has been unrolled by the CCD. The CDC, I should say, uh, the quarantine and isolation calendar, it takes the stress out of deciding when and for how long people with COVID-19 and close contacts need to stay home, get tested, and wear a well-fitting mask. Uh, so if you want to see that, you can go to the cdc.gov page, and you can navigate through that page and check out the CDC COVID-19 quarantine and isolation calculator, a good resource to have. We also want to share with you that we continue to monitor COVID-19 vaccination levels in the state and continue to encourage uh, vaccination and boosting. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the Aroostook County area, as, as well as most of the rest of Maine, with the exception of Hancock County, as you can see there on the map, have dropped to low levels. Again, this was data that was available uh, as of the recording time of this broadcast. So we recorded this on last Thursday. This data may have changed. It was last updated on March 24th, and we were expecting a change in status or an update on the 31st, which is the day that we were taping this program. So again, uh, you want to keep looking at this website to see what the current um, status in terms of transmission rates by county and here in Roostick is. Uh, there are free at home COVID tests that continue to be available again through the covidtest.gov website. There's also a second set that are available at accesscovidtest.org. We encourage you to uh, look into those. The covidtest.gov site, if you ordered one initial set of four, you are now eligible to receive a second set for your household. So uh, it, at first it was once you put in the address, you were uh, invalidated from applying again. If you have done it twice though, uh, it, it will stop you again, but you can go back in and order a second set uh, for your household as of about a month ago. We want to remind folks who are asked to isolate or quarantine and using that quarantine and isolating cal uh, calculator uh, that we showed earlier is a good step to sort of determine how you do that, that we continue to offer free supports, free temporary help with grocery and meal delivery, sheltering assistance, and income and rent support and other things, including medication. Uh, please do consider uh, if you are in this situation to give us a call here or go to the uh, community care for social support uh, section of the uh, CDC's website there, main CDC uh, at main.gov uh, slash DHHS slash COVID-19 referral form. Uh, we are encouraging folks who are asked to quarantine or isolate to do this so that we can support them. And we also want to remind folks that Project TEACH, that's Transportation, Education, Access, Care, and Housing, uh, it's for individuals who have been diagnosed with a cancer diagnosis and are going through treatment. Uh, this provides funding for gas cards, other transportation expenses, even food and lodging for a cancer patient who's receiving treatment in Arusta County or in a facility outside of the local area. You can give Andrea White, who's managing this program for us, a call directly at 554. 4150 or email her at awhite at acap-me.org. This is a partnership with the Maine Cancer Foundation. Thanks to them for their support of the people of Arista County. Uh, and we're able to deliver this for folks here across Northern Maine. 
We are also reminding folks that we continue to offer oral health services available specifically to county youth age birth through 18. 18, our dental hygienist uh, here at ACAP, uh, Lucy Morn, is available to do things like oral health screenings, cleanings, varnish, and molar sealants. If further work, restorative in particular, is necessary, a referral will be made to a dental practice. We can also help you establish regular care through a dental practice. Now, main care participants, you receive these services for free with a valid main care ID. Uh, for non-main care participants, there's a $42 private pay cost, but if payment is an issue and payment, is assistance, payment assistance is required, please do let us know about that and we can certainly help as available. And lastly, if there's any information that you uh, are in need of or any help or assistance that you are in need of at this time, we have a navigator program here at ACAP that's established to be able to help folks navigate through that myriad of social service opportunities that are available that folks don't readily know about. Give us a call here at 764-3721. And, and that's this week's news and information that you can use. And as we noted at the top of the broadcast, a very special edition of ACAP today as we interview three or two former board chairs and ACAP's current board chair. I'm pleased to introduce sort of in the order that they served as board chairs first, Dana Connors, who's best known today as the president of the Maine State Chamber of Commerce. Dana served as ACAP board chair from 1975 to 1984 and was on the board for a bit before that. And we'll talk about the early uh, days of ACAP. Steve Richard, ACAP's longest serving board chair, who served in that capacity from 1994 through 2020, but served on the board beginning in November of 1988. And Trudy Gorno, who's the current chair and has been on the ACAP board for 15 years, so certainly three individuals who committed a great part of their professional lives um, and their passion to the Aroostook County Action Program. Welcome to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. All right, so let's start in chronological order if we could, and actually it's part of the origin story of ACAP as we're celebrating our 50th anniversary. Dana Connors, you were there uh, and served on the committee uh, that brought the two agencies together, the St. John Valley Community Action Council and the uh, Central Aroostook then uh, a County Action Program that formed ACAP and the reason why, we're, why you're on the broadcast today and why we're celebrating this 50th anniversary. Take us back in time to those days of, of bringing the two agencies together and what that was like. Well, Jason, thank you for this opportunity. Um, not, not just because uh, of the celebration, that in itself is really very appropriate and I think uh, very encouraging uh, in so many ways because of all the struggles that have taken place during the life of what is now Rooster County Action Program. But also gives me a chance selfishly to get back and connect with the place in the state of Maine that I truly love the most and the best. But yeah, let, let me begin. I was city manager at the time and um, came on the board in the early 70s. Um, and it was really in the beginnings, um, I think Governor Reed had established its presence here in the county. And we did have two, as you mentioned. Uh, he was, John Reed was governor, uh, but even before that, when it was initially started, and the only reason I mention this is that it, the purpose still exists today. Um, and that is when, when President Johnson created the war on poverty, the whole intent if my memory serves me correctly, was really to um, not create a system that indicated that that would support people. Let me say that differently. That would create dependency on the system, but would give people a chance to allow them to um, obtain the necessary tools or conditions that would allow them to contribute in a way that I always felt that they wanted to. So with that, when it was established, I think, and I may be wrong, because you're asking me a lot, you know, to go back 45 years and remember this, you know that, don't you? So I'm going to make some mistakes, and please don't correct them right off quickly, because I'll probably make a, a few of them, quite a few of them. But anyway, when, when the two, um, it was in it was in the 70s when this process was started and it was started because um, it was required that 
that for an entity to exist, and we had two, you had to serve at least 50,000 individuals. That was kind of the motivating factor uh, to all of this. So the four, 14 people of which I was one representing Central Rustic, uh, and then there were seven also representing St. John. And it, and it took a while because um, it was really probably the late 60s, but because it, it was 72 when it when they all when it came together and it was established that it would be the Aristotle County Action Program. At that time, we had, I don't know, I'm going, this is really thick in memory, but probably 13 or 14 employees. I do remember. Uh, I'm sorry. It, yeah. And we I think we had a budget of about six hundred thousand dollars at that time. Um, and the actual services weren't a lot, uh, and they were quite, as we started off, they were, I think it was Planned Parenthood and uh, daycare a type of service, significant, but in its infancy. And one of the first things, once we uh, were designated, we obviously found that the federal government opened the, opened the, the door, doors for financial support. And we also recognized that the Holton Southern area of our state was not serviced. So that was one of the first initiatives that were undertaken. So I'll stop there because I have a feeling your questions are gonna bring forward other aspects of that. But at that time, it was significant because we, all of us believed in the service that was being provided. Uh, and as you will hear in my future comments, from that point on, it was really building confidence that we were there to serve and that we, uh, because there were some real doubting Thomases, uh, but time has proved that there has been tremendous value in this service and that the number of staff, the number of programs, the budget has greatly increased over time. So that longevity has really paid off. Indeed, I'm gonna move to Steve Richard in just a minute with the next question. Maybe he can pick up um, kind of from where you left off in terms of the sentiment, but I did in the conversation with my predecessors learn from Norm Fournier that in fact, the, the merger that created ACAP was more of a, a forced marriage, if you will, because of the population numbers. Was that process difficult? Did it feel that way at the beginning or was the ability to sort of coalesce around community action and the work that we were doing uh, something that, that, that became quick and natural in those early days? And then I'll have Steve pick that up um, in the mid 1980s uh, when he, uh, well, he picked up in the late 1980s when he joined the board, but in the mid 1990s when he became chair. So, so talk about that, those early days in terms of how that, that marriage came together. Well, there's two acts, aspects of challenges. One, yeah, it, what you said was really quite appropriate is that it was a forced marriage and we didn't fight that because it was very clear that that wasn't a choice and that at that time you had to have that 50,000 population to serve. So yeah, there was that initial remembering, I've had a lot of experience since that time. At that time, it seemed more of a struggle because it was something that I think both agencies deeply believed in what they were doing, even though it was more on the infancy stage of their development. The, the commitment was there, the belief in the service was there. So there was that initial, you know, how do we make this work? How's it gonna work out? Uh, but I never really remember at any time was there any real argument about needing to do it or I'm better than you, or that any that type of competitiveness, if you will, it was how do we get this done? And how do we get it done in a way that best serves the people that were intended to serve um, in this process? So no, I, I would give everybody that was there a lot of credit for, for making it work. And Steve Richard, was that essentially what you found when you joined the board in 1998 and then took over as chair in the mid 1990s, uh, that sort of one Aroostook County, one agency perspective and, and working toward doing and making life better as our, as our slogan would indicate? Yeah, obviously, uh, Jason. First of all, though, I wanna congratulate the Aroostook County Action Program for 50 years of service to uh, the 
people of Augusta County. I'm really pleased to be here with my good friend Trudy, who I've served on the board with for years, but really nice to see a good friend Dana Connors and uh, to be able to be part of this chat. I, I have to agree with Dana, uh, you know, the whole idea of being competitive, I, I really don't see that at all. I think the people in the county um, saw the need and continue to see the need of working together. I mean, when we take a look at what ACAP has gone through as far as from the early days to where it is today and the services that are being provided, I mean, the growth during the time that I was on the board was, was unbelievable. I mean, uh, I was on the board with the closure of Loring Air Force Base, which had an impact on the Arusa County Expo and obviously on the budget, but as, as usual, ACAP just rebounded on that, you know, and found different ways to serve people. And I think that's the important thing is that continually looking at the county and what the needs of the people are. I mean, I think it started off with, with Dana and Norm Fornum and those individuals saying, what do we really need? Dana said, you know, Holton was, was underserved. Um, if you take a look at the services that are now being provided um, you know, throughout the county, I think it's an equal, um, the programs are equal all around the county. Have I seen, did I see changes? Yeah, I saw changes. I, I was very fortunate. I was on the, with, on the board with Brian Tebow was the executive director and uh, was on the board and on the committee that uh, hired Connie Sandstrom. And, uh, and, and as you know, Jason, I was also on the board there. So the changes that we have seen over the, the years in how we provide, or I shouldn't say we, how you provide the service or how ACAP provides service has really been a real unique uh, um, process. You know, from, and, and I think that, you know, somebody asked me, you know, cause you have to, as you know, I didn't hold the seat, Central Aristic Association held the seat. And, you know, my board that I answered to said, well, do you, do you, do you want to continue to serve? And I was going, yes, because ACAP has always been a leader and, you know, could always learn something that I could steal and bring back to the organization that I work for. I mean, because of all of the moving parts that, the, that ACAP had. And instead of it just being, that they say there's a there's a saying that says if you don't change you will be extinct well acap has not i mean acap has seen that and has has done those changes has kept up with what what the county needs and has kept up with the different services that needed to be provided great and you know trudy uh, gornel picking up from that i think one of the things that that, that steve noted uh, that you the three of you are in a unique group i also want to mention that other past board chairs and to think about the 50 year uh, tenure of acap and to think that there's not been that many board chairs steve mentioned and it was one of the things that i remember you trudy and steve sharing with me when i was interviewing for this position was that in the 50 year or near 50 year then history of the agency there had only been for a leader so that the, there was a longevity there was an investment and and there was a commitment there's also been a commitment on the part of board members we've had well over 100 individuals because we currently have a 21 member board it's a tripartite board so made up of consumer uh, private and public sector members uh, in addition to the three uh, distinguished individuals who share the screen with me today uh, past uh, board chairs have included Lloyd Chase Pam Glidden, Raynal Raymond, who uh, just recently passed away. So we send along our condolences to his family, Raynal from Eagle Lake and the long serving director of, of a nonprofit organization in that community as well. And then Steve's predecessor, uh, Tim Crowley from Northern Maine Community College served for three years as board chair. Trudy, that's a, a, a notable list of individuals, but that's just the board chairs, the people who have served uh, on our board over the years um, have really given a lot of themselves. And I know that you've seen that in your uh, 15 years on the board, but especially in your tenure uh, through this pandemic, when I think more has been required and more has been asked of board members that, it, as, that at any other time because of the rapid cycle change that we're going through as an agency. So, so maybe you could comment in your 15 years on the 
on the commitment of people um, and, the, and the volunteers who have sat beside you at the board, both in person and virtually. Yeah, certainly. Um, Steve left very big shoes to fill. And um, I, I just have some excellent people working in the, in the board with us. Um, Steve was there, Bill Egler, Lynn Lombard. I had some wonderful role models and these were very committed people. Um, the 21 member board we have now, these people are coming from all over Aroostook County. They bring a wealth of education and experience and talents to the board. They're a very strong, committed, dedicated board. And they're also very supportive of ACAP and, and what ACAP stands for and the, the programs that you're getting out to the people. It's something that, that we have a shared belief in. And I think that's been very important, um, a small part, but an important part to the success of ACAP. We've had a lot of changes over the year, a lot of new programs. Um, some programs we had are gone that were no longer as, as needed. Um, the response ACAP had to COVID has been remarkable, I think, being able to get out there and change the building physically, changing your procedures to protect the employees and the clients, um, having the, the, the um, shelter in place for setting up to take over um, the overflow from the homeless shelter and the, the response with getting food out to the children when the schools were closed and opening another sem another room when you needed daycare. Um, it's just remarkable the way you're able to pivot and go with, with what the needs are at the time. Now you started to mention a list of things and accomplishments and I'm curious, let's go sort of around the Zoom room here and, and do chronologically again, starting with you, Dana, about some of the memories that stand out in terms of the people, of the people you worked with, the, the community, the changes in the community, the changes we were able to bring about. I know Steve mentioned the, 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 the transition with Loring, uh, just as he was taking over his board chair. You know, Trudy talked about the pandemic, Dana, you talked about the, the initial merger. What else stands out about your tenure and your time and your engagement with ACAP, Dana Connors? Um, well, I, I would, first of all, uh, in order to be as successful as it has become in the time that I was there from the early 70s, but and picking that up at that time, uh, because of that was when the merger took place to the time I left in 85, there was considerable progress, but it was a fight for survival because, and I can recall some of that because at the time it was tremendously um, troubling. Um, but, but one of the greatest assets we had, uh, and nothing works really well unless your staff, uh, the employees, the boards uh, that you have are really committed. It's easy, easier, nothing is ever easy, but easier when conditions are good and the money is there and people accept what you're doing. That was not the case from the 70s once it was established through the early 80s. But the people that got us through were the staff, the board, the, um, and uh, the head of our organization. I can't say enough good about Norm Fournier. He came into that job um, about the time I, honor about the time that not as chair, when I was chair, but prior to that, and uh, he was amazing in terms of motivating the staff, working with the board, um, being networked where it was necessary because for us, it was a fight for survival. I mean, it wasn't long after it was created and we had this merger going and so forth. And yes, we came together with, I, I said 14, I meant to say 40, I think it was around 40 or 44, 43, whatever, and a budget of 600,000. But at the same time, we, we had, it was President Nixon, who wasn't big on the program and impounded funds for administrative purposes. Uh, we had President Reagan, uh, I recall, that moved it from Office of uh, Economic Opportunity into Health and Human Services. There was a constant struggle. Uh, so the, I'd have to give a tremendous amount of credit to the staff for maintaining 
um, during that extremely difficult time, challenging times when it was both financial challenge, but it was also a lot of doubting Thomases, for lack of a better word. We had people in the county that I can remember the two programs, most notably uh, Planned Parenthood, but also the daycare. The daycare was, it was opined in one of the paper that this was similar to a, a social program representing communism. Um, it was not all to that extreme, but there was a lot of doubting. We had some very strong opposition when it came to Planned Parenthood. So there was that time when you, you were really faced with a challenge of both attitude, but also financial. And so when you say it was a fight for survival, it was indeed that in many different ways during that time. And, in, and when you think of how the programs have expanded and when you think of how the budget, I, I, again, I'm going by memory, but it was like 600,000 that um, by the time that I took over, it was over a million uh, and the staff had increased by a hundred people. So there was a lot. And then after that, when I left in 84, it had, I, the budget was close to 10 million. It was like, I think it was around eight and there were over probably a number of programs, probably approaching 15, 20 that were serving in different areas and a 200 person staff. So when you think about the struggles of the time and the accomplishments that went with it, if you don't give a lot of credit to the stick to of and the commitment of the staff and the board, uh, the employees, um, this could have been destined for failure, but it was not. And we know today how important it has become. Hey, Richard, I know that what Dana Connors just said, you have shared many, many, uh, on many, many occasions with me publicly, with fellow board members, that that presence of the staff, the board members and leaders who have helped drive this organization forward has been the backbone of yeah. our great work moving forward. Um, your memories from, from your, your tenure of, your long tenure of involvement with this agency. Well, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll go back even when I wasn't a board member. I happened to listen to the recording of the three executive directors. And, you know, uh, again, I'm going to back up what Dana says. Norm Fawney was just un, an unbelievable person. And, but ACAP had such a humble, humble beginning. I mean, they were housed at the old Loring Air Force Base. And, and I know that Norm told the story, and I think it really goes to show how far ACAP has come when he left a glass of water in his office one day, went home, came back the next day, and the glass of water was frozen. So, you know, we were not talking about the Taj Mahal when this first started. It really has uh, done a great job, and, and uh, the staff has been wonderful. But I think that the board also. The board's always been a governing board. It's not been a fundraising board. And I think that's really important because it keeps driving it, what ACAP is all about. Yes, ACAP, you know, making life better. I think that's what it's all about. I guess a couple of the things, uh, obviously, when I came aboard, they had left the, long, the old uh, air base and were on Main Street. Uh, their offices were on Main Street. And I remember when all of a sudden it was like, well, we have this opportunity to buy this building that's located next to Walmart. Well, I'm going to tell you that that was a real confusing time for the board of directors because it was like, well, you know, we, we don't want to we don't want to show and tell. You know, we, we, we need to make sure that, you know, people understand as opposed to let's just buy it, let's take care of it. I mean, it, you know, the board did come around and, um, and obviously it's a good thing that it did. And again, with the, with the expansion that we, have, that we have seen. You know, there, there was a time, you know, at the board, I think the, the, it's, it was, it's a strong board because there was one point in time where one of the executive directors, and I won't say which one, uh, thought that we ought to get into the business of, uh, buying a trailer park and renting out spaces to earn some extra income. And again, it was one of those things where, do we really want to be a landlord, you know? And it, it caused some controversy among the board and 
eventually the board said, no, they, they didn't really want to go down that road. So there has been, uh, if you take a look now, and I know Trudy can talk about this, but what, what you've been doing lately with all of the uh, expansion of buildings and the forethought as to what do, what do the people in the Rusta County really need has always been at the forefront of all of the executive directors. And I think of all the board members that, and that have served on the board of directors. Trudy, you can certainly pick up the story from there in terms of, uh, of, of a, a very active board and, and moving in momentum moving forward. Um, as we are, I mean, as community needs have sort of probably hit a, an all-time high, Steve has certainly touched upon his time when the closure of Loring Air Force Base was happening and that there was a lot of anxiety, but we have the cascading, you know, conditions of a pandemic, the economic cataclysm that came from that pandemic, uh, a foreign war, and the and the further economic cataclysm that's come from that. So it's like a real perfect storm in, in, in a very horrible way. Um, your thoughts about uh, and you've been on the board for 15 years, so your thoughts and memories and, and reflections. One of the things I remember was when we were talking first about adding a coach to the staff um, back at the beginning, and did we, did we need it? Could we afford it? Um, we didn't wanna hire someone, just have to let them go a year or two later when there was no funding for the position. And now you look at our coaching staff and, and how it's grown and the services they're providing to the people of Aroostook. Um, it was a really tough decision back then and we gave it a lot of thought. Uh, Steve was the chair at the time. That was probably one of the best things that, that we did, but it was a very difficult decision at that time. Um, and now we're, it's kind of exciting. Now we're working on the supportive housing project, which is kind of the landlord thing coming up again, but it fills a need that just isn't being met anywhere else. And um, so I, that's exciting. It hasn't actually gone through yet, but the steps are all in place and it's going well. Steve mentioned the long-term employees and, and that they've been crucial. I mean, there are people still there that after 30, 35, 40 years, um, and their, their experiences and what they bring to the table is huge. And we also have a, a number of really um, good, caring new employees. So it's a, it's a good mix um, right now. They've gone through a lot of changes. Um, again, Steve was there when we started with the whole family approach and changing how we do business and, and get reach people. Um, and that was a huge organizational change and change is hard on everyone. Um, but ACAP, you know, they, they handled it right from top to bottom. Everyone was affected and they've all handled it very well. And this is to, to the good of all we serve. Um, in fact, they handled it so well. Jason, you and your leadership team are out helping other CAP agencies around um, the count, the, um, not just New England, but around the United States, helping them get Get to the point that we are so that's that says a lot about you and your employees and the leadership team so i'm very proud of the changes that have been occurring we've been responsive to what needs to be done and that's not an easy thing to do change is always hard but Thank you, Trudy. I know that my we're very blessed with a great team of employees now, 210 strong across Aroostook County. So we wouldn't be able to, to get what we get done every day without their thoughtful, dedicated spirit. Um, and so, yes, indeed, most grateful for that. Dana, I want to pick up on that, on the whole family concept that Trudy spoke about, because one of the sort of fundamental points of that, the two pillars of that plan are, first, we're providing quality early childhood education experiences, but it's the purpose for that is, among other things, so that parents of young children can engage in the workforce and can expand and increase their horizons. And I, I have a saying with my colleagues, and, and they're used to hearing it at the nine other community action agencies across the state where I say, for every time that we're partnering with Maine Equal Justice on something, we need to be partnering with the Maine Chamber on something. And I think that in the current environment, Dana, I think that there's been more of an awareness 
uh, with business and the business sector that you work closely with on the importance of those things that help individuals engage in the workforce and make the business machine of the state run things like childcare, things like housing, things like workforce development, all of which ACAP is very engaged in. Um, talk for a bit about your perspective on sort of uh, that intersectionality between community action and the work that you do in businesses across the state are engaged in every day. Oh, I think you set it up very well. I could I could answer it in one word and say amen to everything you said because you not only said it well, you spoke to the current condition. You know, we do surveys uh, probably at least every eight years. If the administration changes, or if, or even in the mid of after the first term of somebody, if we'll put out surveys to on behalf of the business community, not exclusively business community, but principally. And the whole point is to find out what is what are the priorities uh, in the economy today, in the business needs today that we need to share with the governor so that they know where we're coming from, uh, but also so that it becomes a priority. Well, in 2019, the governor's strategic plan has become our plan because it does exactly what you said. It recognizes uh, the whole family. Uh, it recognizes the fact that, yeah, taxes, uh, healthcare usually comes out as number one. Um, and it's usually the cost, the concern of that. But in addition, you'd often find there'd be tax issues, regulations, transportation, and those are still important. But what you're finding at the top of the hit parade today, so to speak, when you talk about those types of issues are exactly the ones you said, and you can find them in the strategic plan and you could find them today in our portfolio. It's childcare, it's broadband, it's, um, it's housing. It is anything and everything that we can do to prepare our people for the economy of today. It's not just that everybody needs a four year degree. That's wonderful. But, but the economy begs for that skill and talent that come from trade. So there's room for everything to meet the needs today. Uh, and certainly we know that information, the internet, technology, all of that is extremely important. The other thing we realize is that uh, in addition to housing, childcare, broadband, transportation, that there's also the need for more people. And with that comes the role of the immigrant into our community, the workforce. Yes, you try to attract as many people from away as possible within you know, perhaps people who have moved away that have found us to be a safe place. As a matter of fact, uh, the pandemic has brought to our state from the many visitors who visit the state every year, the tourists, so to speak, the awareness of what Maine has as an opportunity for them, but also a safe place. It's that quality of life that people really come to know in times like this. So the immigrant community is a major part of that. And the biggest issue there is not just recognizing the talent they bring, but the time it takes to get them into our workforce. That's an issue of another, perhaps an, another um, program, but it's one that Senator Collins and Senator King are working on to try to reduce that time. So there is no question, the role of ACAP today is as strong, if not more important, if that's appropriate to say, but also the interaction amongst all of us, regardless of the sector you represent, to come together, to stay together and to work together. That's the economy of today. Indeed, couldn't have said it better myself. So we're gonna just go around two more times. Uh, the last question will be anything that you wanted to add that we've missed, but I, all, I also wanted to, to ask each of you, you've all had very accomplished careers. I mean, Dana, you've, you know, from city manager here in Presque Isle to a, a state um, being on the governor's cabinet to other roles, but your current role uh, at the Maine State Chamber of Commerce, Steve Richard leading the, the premier, one of the premier social service agencies here in Aroostook County uh, with an extremely uh, storied career and, uh, and a lot of uh, really great success 
success under your belt and, and Trudy Guarno, who has, you know, been in real estate and been an early care and education professional, still uh, practicing and teaching, uh, uh, helping the future generation of early care and education professionals to get their grounding in that career. And of course, your, your most important job of being a mom and, and a wife. Um, let's start again with you on this one, Dana, and sort of get what in, in retrospect did your time engaging with ACAP mean for your both professional and personal lives? Dana? Yeah, um, I guess I could answer it for both personal as well as professional. And um, I don't mean to make this sound aloof or anything, but the truth of the matter is it's as basic uh, as recognizing the value of the staff that you have around you. Staff, um, Norm Fournier was exemplary in what he did, but he'd be the first to tell you it couldn't have happened without the staff. Boy, that's a fundamental thing that can get lost in the course of the journey of life. I've never forgotten that. And I've never forgotten that in the time of struggle or strife or trying to survive, the value of people uh, really committed because there would have been more than one time or one reason that ACAP could have gone a different direction. It may not even exist, even though the need was so prevalent, but it didn't. And it didn't because there was a need and there were people who saw the need and didn't give up on making sure that it was not lost in the course of the battle, in spite of what the doubting that may be taking place or the financial concerns that surrounded it. So my takeaway is pretty fundamental, but it has been lasting and I think extremely important. The value in, in jobs like mine, the value of the people that you have around you is, 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 is essential. At the same time, there is always challenges that we face in our job and realizing the value of staying with it not giving up if it's worthy, it's needed and needed is you shouldn't give up. That was proven to me early on by the people of ACAP. Thank you, Dana. And Dana, I would say that, you know, as I have sort of evolved in my career, I've had the opportunity to watch you from, from a distance. And I would say that you are a, a leader that I emulate. And Steve Richard, I've been blessed to have you as a mentor in my career prior to even coming here to ACAP. Um, I'm curious to hear from, from you um, because I've, I've known you for a number of years, again, prior to my time coming from ACAP and we've engaged in civic organizations together and the like. Mm -hmm. What out of your great career uh, and great engagement with ACAP um, is, is something that you've taken with you? Well, uh, professionally, I, I've taken a lot from ACAP. As, as I mentioned prior to uh, during my first question, um, the, the ability to be able to be associated with another nonprofit organization that has been a, a leader in policy development, has been a leader in, in management, uh, it, you know, that has really helped me uh, uh, professionally. Personally, you know, uh, I work for an organization very similar to ACAP in the sense that it's a grassroots organization. And the organization I work for was founded by parents and um, it goes way back. Um, so it, it, it affects a lot of people's lives. Having been associated with ACAP, knowing that Yes, ACAP's got a great staff. Yes, ACAP's got, had great board members, but ACAP truly does make a difference. You know, there are people in the county who would not have heat in their homes if it wouldn't be for the University County Expo. There are people who have brand new furnaces that truly deserve them because of the University County Action Program. There is wonderful, wonderful childcare here in the county because ACAP provides that. And I could go on and on. So when you really stop and analyze it, the difference is ACAP has made a difference, a huge difference in a lot of people's life. And just the thought of being part of that, not being an employee, but being part of that warms my heart. It truly, truly does. Trudy Garno, I know that the connection with this agency uh, extends beyond your role as current chair of our board, and it's a very personal one. And quite frankly, I, I know from our conversations, it's the reason why you're so supportive and so engaged in the work that we do. Uh, of, of all of the things that you think of when you think of ACAP, what stands out? 
because of ACAP that I became an early childhood education teacher. Um, you had a job that I wanted and I was going to school to teach adult ed, but you needed early childhood. Um, and it's been the best career I've ever had. So I wouldn't be in doing what I'm doing if it weren't for you. And it's because of my time on ACAP and in the board and learning about the programs that um, I'm teaching at the uh, at UMPI now as adjunct faculty. And there's so much I get from ACAP that I can take and put into the classes. Plus ACAP um, gives my students a chance to do their field experience and to get down and dirty with the kids. And um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful mix. So I've gotten a lot from, from ACAP. Um, my, my youngest son was in childcare at UMPI, which was uh, the best child care experience I had for any of my children. And uh, he was my last one, the last few years of child care, but it's just opened my eyes to what early care really means, that it isn't just babysitting. And, and it's been quite a journey. And I really appreciate what I've gotten from ACAP to, to do. It's made a big okay. difference. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Trudy, for that. And, and so sort of last round here, any reflections, any thoughts that you haven't shared yet in sort of your, your last word uh, as we celebrate uh, five decades of service to Roostick County together? Dana Connors. Uh, mine is pretty simple in terms of the number of words I use, but they're very, they're packed full of sincerity. Congratulations. You're doing God's work. It really matters and it really makes a difference. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Steve Richard. Yeah, I'm just going to repeat myself. You know, just uh, um, knowing what ACAP has done for the people in Worcester County, I, I think it just sums it all up. I mean, 50 years of providing wonderful service and, and looking for the needs of the county. Again, and I'll repeat what Dana says, congratulations. And uh, Trudy Gorno, I would say the last word is yours, but you and Steve Richard know me well enough to know that I never let anybody. <laughs> it's never a last word. <laughs> I'm going to say you get the last reflection on this, and then I'll, I'll take it out. <laughs> I think Steve said it beautifully that that you know my small part being on the board here is something that I am most proud of in my career um, because of what you do and how you do it, um, and all the all the employees. I mean, it's just a phenomenal. A phenomenal um, program, and uh, again, fifty years is pretty cool. Congratulations! Well, thank you. And I just must say that the, the saying is definitely true that we stand on the shoulder of giants. And there's three giants in this Zoom room with me, and I'm so appreciative uh, for the legacy and the work that you've all done to make this organization both a venerable organization, but one that's capable of meeting community needs in significant and profound ways as you all have, all have shared. So again, thank you so much for spending this time with me and for reminiscing about ACAP's 50th anniversary. And I hope, I know we will see you, Trudy, but Steve and Dana, I hope that we'll see you um, at events and activities as we hold open houses and things like that uh, through the course of the year to celebrate five decades of service of this wonderful organization to the salt of the earth people of this great county. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. And before we leave all of you on this very special edition of ACAP today, a reminder that we are hiring. We are looking for folks, the folks that the three leaders that we just spoke with uh, spoke so highly of uh, throughout their interview uh, about the great work that they've done across Aroostook County. We're hiring from Dyer Brook all the way up to Fort Kent, positions in the classroom, outside of the classroom, uh, community educators, custodians. Uh, it's the opportunity for you to connect with our agency if you are uh, liking the work that we do and want to be a part of this exciting adventure and helping other people here in Aroostook County, we encourage you to check it out on our website, acap-me.org. Check out the open positions and consider submitting your application online today. And lastly, as we do at each point in the broadcast, we leave you uh, with our photo of the week uh, and our photo of the week this week, as it has been since the beginning of this year and very fitting with our anniversary special edition today with our uh, two former uh, board chairs and current board chair is a 50th anniversary throwback picture for this one. We go way back 
into the first six years of what was a cap um, after the merger with the Central Aroostook and St. John Valley uh, community action components to 1978, 1978, where our WIC program, the Women, Infant and Children's program in it, its infancy with a cap, uh, we're doing uh, weights and measures as they still do to this day, maybe using some different technology there to do it. But this is a WIC participant and her baby um, being uh, processed, uh, being helped and supported um, with uh, ensuring that proper nutrition was um, given to the family um, and that the baby's uh, health and measurements were all adding up. Uh, thank you very much to the uh, wonderful team in our Women, Infant and Children's program and to all of those families, our WIC families across the Roostick County who turned to us and who for the last two years, it's been anything but normal, many of them are connecting with us remotely for services, which hasn't quite been uh, as we would have liked, um, but we're starting to get back to fully in person with the Women, Infant and Children's Program and looking forward to seeing more babies, more young children, young families in our facilities again moving forward. And that, again, is this week's edition of ACAP Today. Again, a very special edition. My thanks once again to uh, Steve Richard, to Dana Connor, and to Trudy Agorno for not only appearing on today's edition, but for all of their dedicated service to the Aroostook County Action Program for the last 50 years uh, collectively. So thank you so much uh, to all of them. We'll be back next week with another edition of ACAP Today, and we hope you will be with, here with us as well. We'll see you then. Have a great week, everyone.